Let's take a look back at the fantastic career of Ralph Backstrom, a six-time Stanley Cup champion with the Canadians, who eventually became a WHA legend. Looking back at the remarkable career of Ralph Backstrom, we start, of course, with the hockey database. Ralph, born in 1937 in Kirkland Lake, Ontario. Interesting, his parents were both born in Sweden, moved to Finland, emigrated to Canada from there. It's actually a little-known trivia question. He's cousins with Darren Pupa, the former goaltender of the Buffalo Sabres. Ralph's skating speed, and particularly in his skill, stood out to scouts, and the Canadians put him on their protected list, got him into their organization, as you can see. And in 57-58, with the whole Ottawa Canadians junior hockey, they won the Memorial Cup that year, and Ralph was named the Junior Hockey Player of the Year. He lives up to his promise the following season in 1958-59. What a year it was for Ralph Backstrom. He's named the NHL Rookie of the Year, winning the Calder Trophy, and the Canadians go on to win the Stanley Cup. Let's take a look at that Canadian roster. Not a bad one to break in on. Dickie Moore, Jean Beliveau, Boom Boom Jeffreyon, Henri Richard, Tom Johnson, Rocket Richard, Claude Provo, Jean-Guy Talbot. Uh, you go on and on. The lineup is absolutely loaded. Jacques Plant, of course, doing the bulk of the goaltending. So you've got a, a bunch of uh, Hall of Fame players there. And for Ralph to be part of that team as a rookie was an incredible accomplishment, never mind winning the Rookie of the Year and being a key part of a Stanley Cup champion. Ralph would go on to win five more Stanley Cups and a great career with the Montreal Canadiens. And look at this consistency statistically. Point totals are always right around that between 45 and 65 points. Of course, he's providing great two-way play as a uh, defensive stalwart, but he's always on that third line, and he gets the moniker, I guess, as the best third-line center in hockey, perhaps one of the best third-line centers of all time. However, by 1970-71, he tires of that role, and you can see the situation in Montreal at the time. Uh, the centers include Jean Beliveau, Peter Mahovlich, Jacques Lemaire, uh, Henri Richard is there as well. Some kids coming in, Bobby Sheehan, Larry Plo, Guy Chiron. So he wasn't being utilized, did not uh, see eye to eye with Coach Claude Ruel at the time. Alan McNeil would come in to coach, but he had gone to Sammy Pollock, and actually uh, Ralph had retired twice. Once, I think, on the eve of the first game of the year, once in training camp. So he went to Sammy Pollock, asked to be traded. And then on January 26th of 71, he was accommodated when Samuel Pollock traded him to the Los Angeles Kings in exchange for Gord Labossier and Ray Fortin. And this is a very important trade in hockey history because the Canadians, of course, had previously owned the number one draft pick of the California Golden Seals they acquired in a trade a year earlier. However, as the season was unfolding in 7071, the Seals and the Kings were very close in the standings, and it looked like the Kings may slip to the worst record in the NHL or certainly in the Western Division. So to remedy the situation, Pollock sent Backstrom to the Kings, and it worked for the Kings. They got better, Ralph contributed, they finished ahead of the Seals, and of course the Canadians ended up with next year's number one draft pick, none other than Guy Lafleur. And Ralph plays very, very well with the Los Angeles Kings as he picked up 27 points in those 33 games with the Kings in 70-71. The next year followed up with a solid 52-point campaign, 72-73 at 49 points in 63 games. However, with the Kings floundering a bit on the ice late in 1973, L.A. traded Ralph to the Chicago Blackhawks in exchange for Dan Maloney, a trade that worked out real well for L.A., and Ralph made a strong contribution to the Blackhawks that year in 72-73 with 9 points in 16 games and another 11 points in 16 playoff games as the Blackhawks went all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals before losing to the Montreal Canadiens. In the offseason, Ralph was contacted by the World Hockey Association. Ralph had a desire to go back to Los Angeles and perhaps play for the LA Sharks. 
However, the Sharks were in financial disarray. He ended up having his rights acquired by the Chicago Cougars, who offered him five years and $150,000 per year at a total of $750,000 over a five-year deal at his age, which at the time was 36, so it would have expired at the age of 41. He couldn't say no to that, and he became a Chicago Cougar in 1973. And he wasn't alone. He joined his ex-teammate and player coach of the Cougars, Pat Stapleton. Ralph delivered for the Cougars in that first year. In 78 games, he picked up 83 points, picked up 19 more points in 18 playoff games as the Cougars made an improbable run to the Avco Cup Finals before finally losing to Gordie Howe and the Houston Arrows. Ralph not only contributed on the ice, he was a great leader on and off the ice as well, as noted here by then head coach Jacques Demers. Uh, Ralph being 37, he inspired our younger players. Uh, we've seen many times Ralph stay after a practice, which was maybe an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, stay, stay another 15, 20, 20 minutes more with the players, with the younger guys, for show them how to shoot the puck or you know, these little tricks that have, uh, Ralph has as a center. And he's been such a uh, great athlete for us and he's such a good guy, you know. He's always the type of guy that will give you 100%. I've seen Ralph get hit really hard sometimes because naturally your best player is the one that's bound to be, get hit more. Don't try to take a run at you to scare you off. But one thing about Ralph, he'll bounce back stronger. And, you know, when you're sitting on a bench, you're 21, 22, and you see a 37-year-old guy skating like you say, boy, I got to do the job too. So he's been, like you say, Andre, he had a great year for us. And I think uh, Ralph is the type of guy that keeps so well in shape, he'll be able to play for another four or five years. At the conclusion of the season, Ralph had an opportunity to sit down with WHA Films and fellow WHA superstar Andre Lacroix to discuss his approach to the game and the Cougars franchise. I played against Ralph Backson for many years and uh, you don't seem to, need to get any older. You play like you're 21 years old. What was your feelings when you first came with the Chicago Cougars? Well, I was, uh, I was here with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks uh, at the conclusion of last year and uh, I went down to the amphitheater and I watched the Cougars play a few hockey games and I was pretty, pretty impressed. Uh, did you find it difficult to adjust to uh, different players? No, not really, Andy. Uh, when you come to a new hockey club, you have to try different combinations to see if you can get a, uh, a combination going or a blend of three different uh, hockey players. And uh, at the start of the season, I played with different fellows, and uh, it wasn't until near, near the end of the season when I started playing with Duke Harris and Bob Lincoln. And it seemed that these two fellows uh, suited my style of play very well because I had on the other side Bob Reddington, who can skate uh, very, very fast, probably one of the fastest in the league. Duke Harris, who, as we all know, shoots a puck as hard as anybody in hockey today, so it was a good combination for me because uh, sometimes I like to hold on to the puck, sometimes I hold on too, too much, but uh, it worked out pretty well, and uh, I was really pleased playing with those two balls. If you have a chance on a breakaway, is it important to you to go as fast as possible, or do you make up your mind at the blue line, or do you make up your mind when you get in front of the goalie? Well, what I like to do is I like to see, first of all, who's in the net, and I, uh, I, I try and study the goaltenders a little bit. And, uh, before the game, I'll watch them warm up a bit, and uh, I think that certain goaltenders like to come out at you when you have a breakaway. Others like to back into the net. Uh, some, some of the goaltenders are left-handed, so if you're going to shoot along the ice, you have to put it on the other side of the net. I think you have to, just like anything else, you have to do a little homework on the goaltenders, and uh, because don't worry, they've already done their homework on you, so... Uh, sometimes a 50-50 deal going in on a breakaway, but uh, uh, I think that most cases, uh, most goals are scored by shooting, usually along the ice on the stick side or up high over the glove, glove side, and I, I really don't know what I'm going to do when I have a breakaway because uh, I always feel that uh, if I don't know what I'm going to do, how in the world is a goaltender know? <laughs> 1974-75 season was quite an interesting one for Ralph. It began with the 1974 WHA versus the Soviet Union Super Series 2 and the Summit, which was the four games in Canada 
in four games in Russia. And Ralph acquitted himself quite well, scoring seven points in the eight-game series, centering a line with left wing Mark Howe and right wing Gordie Howe. Pat Stapleton. Up to Mark Howe. Cross to Ralph, backs from ahead to number nine, Gordie Howe, backs from Putin instead of Mark Howe, but he scores! Backstrom! And it goes to Brad Selwood. To Ricky Lee. Lee, long pass for Gordy Howe. It is good. Traps it with Baxter. It's on the line to Ralph Baxter. Going right in. He shoots. He scores! Watch that great pass by Lee. There's another great pass. Right over to Baxter. He gives him the old deep and pulls him out and cuts it in. Two great passes. Watch Rick Lee's pass. There's Howe with it. Look at Baxter. Him out with the Russian defender. Now, fakes the shot. Pulls it around. The goaltender's out too far. Can't cover that short side. And we're back in the hockey game. Unfortunately, back in the WHA, things were about to get a little bit rocky for Ralph. The Cougars, during the early part of the season, started to run into financial trouble. In order to keep the franchise alive, Ralph, Dave Dryden, and Pat Stapleton joined forces to become the player owners of the Chicago Cougars and they quickly learned how expensive it is to run a big league sports franchise and the Cougars of course would officially uh, end their franchise at the end of the season. Ralph had a very poor season uncharacteristically and the team which had been such overachievers in 1974 or certainly one of the most disappointing teams in the WHA in 74-75. Ralph and several of the now free agent Chicago Cougars ended up with the expansion Denver Spurs to begin the 75-76 season. Ralph's play is one of the few bright spots. The team doesn't draw well, runs out of money by midseason. They are shuttled off to Ottawa to play a couple of games there before the franchise officially disbands in January. And later in January, January 20, 1976, Ralph's fortunes take a positive turn as he signs with the New England Whalers. He made an immediate and positive impact with 33 points in 38 games. Ralph didn't waste any time making an impact upon joining the Whalers. He scored in his very first game. Chased down by Hurley and dumped. Kept in by Neekamp. Neekamp dashes up the board, sets it up in front. Connor over skate, back comes back. Here's Ralph head down. One on two, however. Ralph over the line, looking for help. Looks for Rogers or Climby. Finds Climby, or at least Hank Slavin from the point. He fires a behind the case to Climby in front to Baxter. Scores! Ralph Backstrom, great pass from Climby. Hank Slavin will assist at 6.33. Once again, we've got a tie hockey game. Ralph's fourth year in the WHA and his second with the Whalers would be his last in professional hockey. He was given limited ice time by head coach Harry Neal. One bright spot, however, was the midseason All-Star Classic, which was held in Hartford. Ralph was a replacement player and uh, had the opportunity to play in his final WHA All-Star game. Another perennial All-Star with a long list of impressive Major League Hockey credits. From the New England Whalers, number 23, Ralph Backstrom. Ralph, of course, made good use of his spare time when he was a hockey player and pioneered what was called then, as he as he notes, street skates, which we later knew as rollerblades. On the ice... Ralph Backstrom will always be remembered as a uh, as a winner, as a solid two-way player, and certainly one of, if not the best, third-line center in hockey history. I spent uh, the last three or four summers using uh, what uh, uh, we call uh, street skates. I found that. Uh, Using them all summer, I can keep my legs toned, uh, my back muscles and shoulder muscles uh, toned, and uh, uh, and I can. Uh, it seems that skating in the hot weather, I can increase my wind capacity.
Thanks for watching this episode of PHA TV. Please hit the subscribe button and never miss a classic hockey video.